Over the last few months, I've been using some of my special helpers from the Duck Collection to tell you about God and share some stories from the Bible. And this morning, I have a few ducks with me, and they all have something in common. The first one is my Sherlock Holmes duck. Elementary, my dear Watson. Then there is my handyman duck. And I also have my Einstein duck. I wonder if you can tell me what they all have in common. Well, in their own way, and in their own expert area of expertise, they are the people you need to listen to. They're worth listening to. Take my handyman. If something goes wrong in my house, quite often I won't know how to fix it, or it might seem like a really big problem. But I have a friend who's really good at sorting out problems around the home. His name's Benny. And Benny can come along, he can look at the problem, he can tell me, oh, I know what that is. And he knows how to put it right, or he knows someone who will put it right for me. And also, if Benny comes along, looks at it and goes, ooh, I can't fix that for a few days. But don't worry, it'll be okay. It's not something major. Even that can be quite helpful, because I might be worried... And just the fact that he says, oh, don't worry, that's really helpful. Because I might not have seen this before, but he sees it all the time. He has much more of an experience of the problem and can help me. And then there's Einstein. He was one of the very best and brainiest scientists in the 20th century. And I guess if I had a question about science, especially physics, he would be the one to go to. And then there's Sherlock Holmes. In the Sherlock Holmes stories, when there's a big mystery and the police are trying to solve it and they're getting nowhere, Holmes always proves someone worth listening to. Experience suggested he would use his brilliant detective ability to solve the crime and catch the body. Now, if I went to Sherlock and asked him about physics, or I went to Einstein and asked him about plumbing, I might not get very good answers. But within their own areas of expertise, these are the people worth listening to. That reminds me of a story we're going to share from the Bible today. And it's found at the start of Mark's Gospel. Last week, we heard a story about a man called John the Baptist who wore strange clothes and ate some quite strange food and how he told people to repent of their sins, to get baptised or ducked in the water. See what I did there? And to prepare to be ready to welcome Jesus. Then we're told that one day Jesus, the light of the world, went to John and asked to be baptised. And John did it. He went down, he and Jesus went down into the water. John lowered Jesus into the water. And the Bible tells us something happened as Jesus came out of the water. It says the Holy Spirit descended from heaven like a dove and settled on Jesus. And Jesus heard a voice from heaven saying, You're my son. I love you. I'm really pleased with you. Now, if there's a voice that's worth listening to, it's the voice of God. Jesus would hear lots of voices over his life. Some would tell him he's wrong. Some would tell him he was mad. Some would try to tell him different ways he should do what God wanted him to but Jesus always listened out for the voice of God. And that re voice reminded him, above all, that God loved him. And it's the same with us. We'll hear lots of voices telling us how to live. Some of them will be really good. Parents, teachers and so on. But others will be voices telling us, oh, if you really want to be happy, you need to have this or to buy that. And some will be nasty voices telling us we're no good. Sometimes we might even tell ourselves nasty things. 
We need to listen out for the voice of God. Sometimes we'll hear that voice from the Bible. Sometimes God will speak to us through other people. Or even sometimes he will communicate with us through how we're feeling. But the one message God wants us to know is that he loves us. He cares about us. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus into the world for us to show how much he loves us. Because we're precious to him. And if we invite him, God will send the Holy Spirit to be with us. Just as he was with Jesus. To remind us that we are loved. That God will never give up on us. And we can trust him. Because he will always be with us, whatever we face. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you love us. You love us so much that you sent Jesus into the world. Help us to trust in your love. Even when we feel bad and feel really down and sometimes tell ourselves we're no good. Help us to know that you really love us and that you think we're precious. In Jesus' name, amen.